Hey, smart authors. Welcome to another video on this channel. Uh, today, we are going to be jumping into a masterclass I did for someone's private mastermind, helping them get all of the strategies and kind of an A to Z implementation of Facebook ads and funnels for selling their book. So this is pretty much everything from the overarching strategy to the offers for your funnel, to the copy for your sales page and your ads, um, to the actual setup and overview of your ads um, and problem solving all of your ads as well. So it's really like a complete A to Z of everything that we run at Smart Author Media for our clients when we're running a paid book funnel. So hopefully you get a lot out of this session. Um, it is a longer video, it's around an hour and 20 minutes. Um, and the actual masterclass went for around two hours with Q&A and things like that. So there's a lot of value to be had inside this video. So hopefully you enjoy. Uh, I can't wait to hear what you think. And let me know below what your biggest takeaways are. Let's roll that intro. Today, we're going to be talking about, as Sue said, selling more books, building your list and growing your business using ads and funnels. So ads and funnels is something that we specialize in our business. And, you know, we do Amazon ads and things like that as well. So we kind of see both sides of the advertising realm, but I really like to specialize in this area because it's harder. Not many people will have a go at it by themselves, but hopefully we can empower you today to know how to do this for yourself. So who am I? Sue has already alluded to who, who I am. I don't like to toot my own horn too much. Obviously, I gave Sue my bio, but I think that actions speak a little bit louder than words. So here's a couple of clients and the results that we got for them as they started working with us. Um, Michelle Cunningham, we sold 267 books in the first 19 days, uh, 5,000 revenue. So that was a really awesome book. That was something that wasn't a lot, like most of the books that we work with aren't launches. We revitalize books that have have been previously sold or are already published. Uh, price package profit. This is a long-term client of mine. We're still working together today after 12 months. 1,000 books sold in the first four months. 15,000 in recurring revenue. This is the number. Using the strategies that we teach wow. today, it, you know, really lends to him being able to sell books on the front end, but then taking people through a customer journey and bringing them into his core business service, which is really the main benefit of what books can do for you. And that's where you make the most money. Now, Nigel here offers a monthly recurring membership offer and it's only $47 a month, but that can add up quickly when you have thousands of new potential clients coming into your business. George Markowski, 543 books and $69,000 in revenue. So again, another one of those examples, being able to sell something on the back end of your book because the book buyers, the book people who opt in for your book or buy your book, they are your best clients. They will become your best clients. Go Diaper Free, 258 books sold in the first 30 days and $5,000 in revenue. Now, these two here are actually back-end revenue figures. And then this one and this one, both direct in funnel revenue figures. So that's not even accounting for any back-end stuff that could potentially come into play. Um, Scott Olford, in the first 30 days, we actually sold 656 books for him. Um, and that was through Amazon and Facebook ads. And then James Shramko, awesome Australian client. We actually gave away 5,000 books in the first 30 days at 90 cents per book um, to an Australian and US market. Now, this is using a similar strategy to what Sue has already taught you, where you give the book away for free. So just in exchange for an opt-in name and email kind of thing, but still fantastic results. In the past six months, as Sue alluded, uh, I've sold over 12,000 books and this is sold slash given away. So this is a combination strategy of selling and giving away books. I think it's, it's a really impressive number and I'm super proud of the work that we've done. So, you know, as a new or even established author, you're probably facing a big problem. You know, how do I get my book into the hands of people and make money doing it? That's pretty much the main thing that every author wants to achieve if they are going in it with that intention. So a lot of people I see actually come up to a bit of a hurdle where they have a book and then they think they're going to make money from the, like all their money from the book. 
And it's like in very rare cases, unless you get an awesome book deal or you're a new JK Rowling or something like that, you're probably not going to get a lot of money from your book. And so it's up to us to be strategic and smart about how we sell a book. And for me, I think that there's a few different things here that we can identify. So, you know, for selling our book, there's complicated ways, there's simple ways, there's leveraged ways, there's not leveraged ways. So from a complicated standpoint, let's just say that that Facebook ads and funnels is a little bit harder than some of the other methods like Amazon, but both of these are leveraged ways of selling your book. Now, not, not leveraged ways, you know, that also goes from a, a simple to complicated scale as well. So not leveraged ways is, you know, like going to events and trying to sell your book or give your book away. You know, that obviously takes a lot of time, energy, effort, friends, you know, maybe leveraged, you could potentially get in a bookstore but how complicated is that, right? Like that's probably not an easy feat. You probably have to either really, really connect with the bookstore owner or, and then at that point you might only get in one store, you know, so it's not very leveraged in that sense. You might have a lot of traffic in that one store, but not across the country or the world. And so like, really for me, when I look at the way to sell books, um, I'm always going to go to the leveraged ways. And I'm actually going to default to the Facebook ads and funnels because this, this way is the way that we can build lists and make more money. When we sell our books on Amazon ads, we get our books into the hands of people, but we leave the journey up to them. We're not able to take them into our ecosystem and nurture them and send them into other offers that we may have. And so with that in mind, Facebook ads and doing funnels, whether paid or free, is really the only way that you can effectively utilize your book. So where do you start, right? So it really comes down to the strategy. Now, Sue has obviously told you all about giving away your book and giving away your book and you know offering a strategy call on the back of that. That's, that's pretty much the default strategy I recommend to clients who just want to have calls and conversations and bring people into their next offers as fast as possible. But let's um let's have a quick look at like what some of the benefits are. Let's say pros and cons. Selling your book is harder. Selling your book can create great customers. Those customers will likely read your book versus the people you give it away to, there's a higher percentage chance that these guys will be readers because they purchased this book from you. Because they purchased this from you, that makes their next purchase easier. So in that sense, when you sell a book, it's a little bit harder to get customers and the conversion rates are lower, but you get the benefits of great customers. You get the benefits of people actually going through your stuff, consuming your book. And like most of us, we wrote our book for a reason. We want people to read it. We don't just want to use it as a, a lead magnet kind of tool. That doesn't mean that people who get your book for free won't, but that's you know just a small caveat here. Like I have found and seen that people who buy books, read books more than people who get books for free. People who pay, pay attention, they say. So giving your book away for free, this is easier. You can build your list easier, but you may, you may have a bunch of unqualified people or people who aren't as good as the book buyers. And so like, that's fine. Ultimately, both of these can lead to us creating a customer journey to nurture and, and bring people into what we have to offer. They're both good strategies. It just depends. I find that this is also more expensive, right? To do, this is cheaper. And so like, it also determines like, you know, what your budget is and what you're happy to pay for a customer or a lead. Because ultimately the people who buy your books are still leads. They're not yet fully indoctrinated into your business. They're not fully customers. And so if you just look at it like that, would you rather have a cheaper lead or a more qualified, more expensive lead that is most likely going to be a bit more of an action taker, generally speaking. So once we determine what we want to do. And for today's sake, we're going to pretend that paid is the strategy for us so that we can go into a rabbit hole there. Um, we need to determine what our funnel offers are going to be. And so a lot of you guys may have physical books and digital books already. So the two different formats there, I would throw in an audiobook is probably something that you should consider looking at creating. And um, I'm not sure what Sue's stance on this is, but there's a, a few AI tools that can mimic your voice these days if you train it, and they can actually create your audiobook for you a little bit more simply. Again, I'm not really sure where I even stand on that. You know, the, the actual intentions and purpose of that would be over time, but definitely just something to consider if you want to make your life a little bit easier 
but obviously just make sure you read through terms of services of all those platforms and things like that, just so that you're protecting yourself. But okay, so let's just pretend we've got three different formats that we potentially could offer our book in. We've got a physical book, we've got a digital book, and then we've got a audio book. So the way that we look at our book funnel offers, we have the front end. I'm just going to put FE. So this is the first offer that someone will see, right? This is what our sales page will be about. And this is typically our book plus bonuses. And so you can actually lead your front end with audiobook plus some bonuses or physical book plus some bonuses or digital book plus some bonuses. It doesn't actually matter. I would actually argue that it depends on the market that you're in. It depends on who your audience is. Are they more likely to listen to audiobooks? Cool. Like t- let's test an audiobook up front. That's really going to be the way that you can determine if it's successful for you. I don't have the answers for you. I don't have the answers for clients. I can only offer suggestions and then we can test it. The the cool thing about ads is that we have a testing machine machine. We can ultimately test what we want and validate if it works or not. That's really the real benefit of running ads. When you run organic, it takes a lot of time. It's confusing. You know, people may already be like savvy to you. They might already be warm to you. When we run cold ads, no one knows about you. And so like it's a true test of if it's going to work or not. And so let's just look at this. We have the audiobook potentially. We have the physical. We have the digital. And so pick one of these, which one would you like to lead with? And then look, let's look at you know, what are the other things that we can throw in as bonuses. So, you know, potentially we have a you know, bonus chapter, potentially we can give access to like a Facebook group. That's always a good bonus as well because then people are already prepared to join a Facebook group because they know they're getting access. Potentially, we could give any sort of worksheet or any sort of companion that goes along with your book. So just have a think about those kind of things that you can add on to your main offer. You know, one of the three formats of books that can be additional value to you. Maybe you've already got resources that people get when they buy the book, but that, you know, you can just upfront disclose that that's a bonus that they're going to get access to. So just think about those kind of things. Next, we have the order bump. And the order bump is essentially a little checkbox when you buy the main offer that they can add to their order form when they are purchasing, when they're checking out, right? So it's a really simple way for them to add this offer on to their purchase. And so the way that I usually do an order bump is I'll suggest that we give something that is worksheety, templatey, you know, checklisty, anything that's like a tactical bonus that you can give that goes well along with your book. I would recommend that we give that away with one or both of the other formats of books that you have available. And so if we have the, let's just say we're selling the physical book on the front end, then I would go audio plus digital plus worksheet or something that goes along. If we're selling digital, it would be, you know, let's add the physical and audio. If if you don't want to worry about fulfilling on a physical book, then let's just forget that in the funnel. Like it's not a big deal, but just think about this like in a way where like we want someone to have all of the ways to consume our book so that you know, they have a better opportunity to listen in their preferred way or read in their preferred way, do highlighting on their iPad or whatever, you know, like we want to make it easier for them. And if we offer those formats, someone like myself, I really like to read digital and listen to audio. I do have physicals, obviously, but I find myself these days going to digital because it's actually easier for me on the go. I can have thousands of books on my iPad without really any hassle. And so that's just something to think about for your customers. How do they consume? What we have after that is OTO, which is uh, stands for one-time offer. And this is essentially another page after they purchase. So when they submit their order form, you know, there's a step in the funnel where it allows them to click a button and add it to their order. They don't have to give their credit card details again or anything like that. And the OTO, there, there can be multiple of these, by the way. So, um, This is going to apply for both. Let's just say we have two. Um, And so the way to think about this offer, or the way I like to think about it is your book takes someone on a journey. They start at one place. And this is if you're like a nonfiction author who writes, let's just say something that is like transformative. So, you know, it could be actionable business advice. It could be whatever. Sue helps women of faith write books. 
you know, it could be something that is along that path. And we'll be picking on Sue a little bit today as well with her ads. So Sue's book, you know, they start at a, a point of like, I've got a book in me. I really want to write a book. How do I do that? After they read Sue's book, they're at a point where it's like, cool, I know how to write a book now, but I might not have all of the worksheets that Sue takes her clients through when they write a book. I might not have access to recordings and trainings that Sue offers to help people get their book done faster. I might not have access to the tools and things that she recommends to speed up the process of getting the book out or making sure that it's refined to a point where it's ready to edit and publish faster, you know, those kind of things. And so that's the problem that Sue's book created for her, the reader. You know, they'll go from A to Z. Now they know how to write the book, but they don't have the assets that help speed up the process or they don't have the tools that help make their life easier. And so that's really what you want to offer on your OTO page. That's going to be the tool that makes someone jump and go, ah, oh, yeah, like that's what I need. Now, sometimes even this creates another problem. And then that's what you would offer on OTO too. Like that's what you would offer on the next upsell. So it's like, you don't want to offer everything, but you want to offer a good solution on this step here. But then, you know, that may create a new problem for them. So like, as an example, now I've written my book, it's published. How do I sell my book? Maybe Sue's got a program on that. Or how do I run ads to my book? Maybe Sue's got a program for that. And so that would be what's next. And you can frame that in that way. That's essentially the structure of how we do our funnels with our clients. And that's the way that we think about offers with our clients. And so, you know, there's obviously price points that go along with these. So I'll run through those. There's, there's also conversion rates that you should be um, savvy to as well. So that you know what to expect. So from a front end perspective, you can charge anywhere from 95 cents or, you know, sub $1. I would say all the way up to $20 would make sense. And it depends on your industry. Um, I actually prefer to charge less here because I can get then higher volume through the funnel so that they can see the other offers that I have in the funnel and they can become customers of mine, well, my clients, so that there's an opportunity for you know further nurturing and, and on selling in the future. So I would say on this one, charge less if you can, if you're cool with it. On the um, order bump, then we can start to add in some higher pricing to um, increase our average order value. So from the order bump side, let's just say, you know, we can charge 17 to $37, sometimes even $47, depending on what's in included. And then on the OTO side, for the first one, you want this to be higher priced, the first one. So let's just say like 97 to 297. Now you don't have to charge in 97s, but that's just the way I do as a marketer um, because it's <laughs> it's what we always do. And then, you know, for like OTO two, you just want it to be less of a price than this one. And so let's just say, now I always like to do downsell payment plan offers for the OTOs. If this is 97, I might offer people two payments of $50. If it's 297, I might offer four payments of $75 or something. That way we can still give people the opportunity to buy, even if money is potentially the concern that they have. Our offers are really going to help people. And so like we just in our best interest to give them as many opportunities as we can to allow them to be able to get access to it. Okay, so conversion rates. On the front end, from clicks to sales, we should probably expect a 5 to 15% percent conversion rate to cold traffic. So, you know, if we have a hundred clicks, we should potentially see five to 15 people buy our book on the front end. From an order bump perspective, we should see roughly, it depends on your offer and how good it is, but I would say 30% to 50% is a really reasonable rate here. 30% is still good by the way, but that's roughly. So um, if we do the math, let's just make it a little bit higher volume. If we had a hundred people buying our book, we should see roughly 30 to 50 people buy our order bump. And then on the OTO side, we could probably say both of these would have a similar conversion rate. We could probably expect 5 to 15% take this offer. Now, um, I've done a video previously on the math of this, but obviously just write these numbers down. You can put all of your funnel offers into a spreadsheet or something, and then you can calculate, hey, if I send a thousand clicks to my sales page, you know, that's netting me roughly 50 buyers of my book. If 30% take up that order bump offer at X price, how many will I have there? 
if the next amount of people take up my OTO offer, what will I have, et cetera. And so just remember that this, this number and this number is only people who buy your book. It's not the clicks from the beginning. So yeah, I would highly recommend you do an exercise where you can put all of your funnel offers and your pricing in a spreadsheet. And then you work out, you know, if people buy at certain percentages and what your average order value will be at the end of it, because that'll help you calculate roughly what you can spend or are happy to spend on getting a new book buyer. Because with our agency, most of the time we try our best to make the sale of the book as inexpensive as possible. And sometimes, you know, it costs $50 to sell a book with ads. And so if our funnel revenue per person is $50 or higher, then we're making money still on the front end. Sometimes that's not always the case, but at the same time, if you can calculate that and have that number in mind, then you know what roughly you can spend to get a customer, a new book buyer. And if you're okay spending a little bit more, then at least you've worked out that math. You know what you're happy with at the end of the day. Now we need to go into doing writing for our sales page. So I've actually included a resource here. You guys can write that down, links.smartorthomedia.com forward slash book funnel copy. So the questions I ask my clients when they come on board, these ones here, minus the sign off copy, I ask them for a summary of their book. This is usually a one to two paragraph summary. You know, why did you write your book? I mean, what is it about overall? Like you, usually you'll write a summary when you're you know, publishing on Amazon and, or publishing in general. So you should already have this asset. What are the 10 best things in your book? I like to do what are the 10 best things in your book? And what page are they on? So it's specific. I'll show you how to use that in the funnel later. What are the five reasons why someone should buy your book? So give me five tangible reasons why someone should buy your book. Like author bio, right? So tell me about yourself as an author. Why do you write your books? What impact are you trying to make in the world? What are the tangible results you've helped with? We want to kind of do a mixture of like your mission with the results that you've helped produce. So we want to give you a little bit of clout as well. If you're a results-based kind of person, it, you know, again, it's different for every kind of author. You know, maybe it's the amount of people you've impacted, you know, lives changed, et cetera. Just think about that kind of stuff. All right, so this is how it relates to a sales page. Now, this is an opt-in sales page, but literally the structure for my resource is based around an order page. And you'll do just fine implementing it in the same way for both types of funnels. Okay, so we have our headline up here. Now, I actually don't overcomplicate headlines too much, but you can definitely write something that's a bit more benefit driven. But for you, you know, this could just be like book for target market. And then you can put in the book, like the book name as the headline. If you wanted to make it results driven or benefit driven, you could go like how XYZ, you know, include the, the avatar, how business owners are able to work less and make more. This book reveals though, you know, a counterintuitive approach to building a profitable business and a life you actually love. Like that's kind of, if you wanted to make the headline a little bit better, um, you could do something like that. Now, Coming into the five reasons why someone should buy your book. Literally, you can list them as bullet points next to your form. So it's like right at the top of the page. Anyone who comes from your ad is going to see this right away. And they're going to be able to make an informed decision on whether they should get your book or not. It's really simple. You know, equates to building sales pages. I actually like to go and put in social proof right here, right away. And this can just be reviews from Amazon. That's what I use most of the time because that's where we have most of the content. This could also be social posts on Facebook, people commenting about how awesome your book is, um, messages on Instagram or Messenger or whatever, any kind of social proof to your book. Um, summary. So this is the next section below that reviews section that I just highlighted. And um, and this is essentially you know a summary of your book. This is something that you would grab from, let's just say, your Amazon description or something that you've already created elsewhere. And then again, I like to do more proof. Like I overload my pages with with reviews so that people were just like, whoa, I should get this book. <laughs> okay. So then after the, the second testimonial section, we have the 10 best things. Okay. So here are a few secrets you'll learn inside the book today. And then you can literally do the 10 best things. It doesn't even have to be 10. I've just, you know, I've got five there, but it can be, you know, five to 10 best things and what page they're on. Again, this just helps people get like a little bit of a sneak peek inside your book and an actual tactical benefit rather than, you know, the benefits at the top that you've written. Like this actually shows them inside the book a little bit more. Author bio underneath that. And then we have our sign-off copy. So the sign-off copy can literally be reused 
for any book. I actually just have this as a template and then I customize like five things kind of thing. And then I just use this for every client. So um, the sign off copy is actually in the resource and um, it's, you know, it's something that you can just easily customize for yourself or take out. You know, there's, there's no necessary need to include this kind of stuff. This is more of like for marketers and business owner, you know, authors, you know, if you don't have a book like that, this is just an added scarcity urgency kind of thing um, that we add in to, to make people like really want to get their hands on the book. Okay. So this is the doc again, the resources there. All right. So by the way, that page that I just showed you, we ran to cold traffic. We had a 60% conversion rate on that sales page of people opting in. So that's people who clicked to view the page. 60% of those people put their name and email in to get the book. And in 30 days, we gave away over 5,000 copies of that book. Really big numbers. This is stuff that I like, I'm not just like teaching you a theory. Like this is stuff I implement and use for my clients every day. And so like rest assured, like it's proven stuff <laughs> and the numbers are right here for you. So it is actually time now for Facebook ads. The first thing that we have to know, and this is just a total technical structure standpoint of Facebook ads, is we have three levels to any ad. We have the campaign type. So for us, most of us are going to be doing some sort of conversion campaign. And there's really two. There's leads, and this is a specific campaign in Facebook, and then sales. So if you have a free book and you're getting or giving a copy to someone in exchange for a name and email, that's a lead campaign. If you're if you have a paid book and they're buying something, that's a that's a sales campaign. Okay, so it's different. Then we have the targeting at the ad set level. So you can think of this as like campaigns here, ad sets here, ad is down here. So on a, on an ad set level, we have the demographics. What's their age? What's their gender? What's their location? Interests and behaviors. So this is like the detailed targeting area. So this is where we can start to look at who we want to target. Um, and so, you know, for Sue's book, as an example, uh, Women of Faith, we would probably go into the detailed targeting area and start to type in things that would relate to that. So like people who would potentially be authors, but then also believe in God, right? So we would start to look at different targeting options that have that correspondence. So, you know, popular book writers, we would try to find, we would um, look at what the popular you know churches are in the countries that you know Sue's targeting. We would look at you know the the popular idols as well, and we would kind of do a bit of a discovery on where we would uh, start our search. And I'm sure Sue, you know, in her experience, has run many ads and knows exactly how to target her audience. Um, but we'll explore this a little bit later. We'll actually jump into the the Facebook ads editor and go through this um, together. And then finally, you've got um, lookalike audiences, which is essentially if you have an email list of customers or leads already, and you want to market to people who are similar to those people, then you can actually upload that audience to Facebook and create a lookalike audience, which is essentially a audience that is similar or is has the same attributions as the audience that you've just uploaded. Now, uh, obviously this isn't 100% accurate because people use old email addresses for Facebook versus the email addresses they gave you when they, you know, became a lead. But you know, it's it's pretty good overall. Like it's around 70% accurate, I would say. Um, you can actually create lookalike audiences off of conversion events as well. So when someone is either a, uh, they have gotten a free book from you or a pay book from you, we will typically set up a conversion event where they either become a lead or a sale to Facebook. Um, it's called website purchase for the sales area. And with that, you can actually tell Facebook to create a lookalike audiences of all of your leads, or you can create, tell Facebook to create a lookalike audience of all of your sales. And that, that doesn't require you to upload any kind of lists to Facebook from there. Cool. And then we have the creative, the ad level. So this is, uh, this includes a few different areas. This is one of my clients. We have the primary text, which is here. We have the headline, which is down here. We have the creative, which is obviously this image. And then we have the button. So these are the kind of the areas that you can customize within your ad. So, um, I want you guys to all take a mental note of this, uh, this image, this image works extremely well from a creative level. I just want to pause here and just talk about imagery a little bit more because this is, I think something people overcomplicate a little bit too much. If you have 
copies of your book, physical copies of your book. I want you to take photos of yourself holding the book. I want you to also go and get people, uh, photos of people with your book as well. Maybe you with people with your book, maybe other people with your book, holding it up, feeling excited, things like that. Like people discount the, I call them lifestyle photos for ads too much. Like those ads actually work the best in my experience. And I've actually seen, you know, ads where someone's taken a photo, this is Scott actually took a photo of his book in a box, like a, a bunch of book, his books in a box. And he was just opening the, the box. And like that has actually been our cheapest, highest performing ad from Scott. Um, you can also get your book and just like hold it in front of you and take a photo of you holding it. You can also take a video and flip through the pages of your book and video that as well. You know, like we don't have to overcomplicate the creative side of things. Now, um, I obviously create a lot of graphics and things like that for my clients because it doesn't require them to do any work. And like for me as an agency owner, like I want to do as much as I can with marketing the book without my client's input as possible. So like we create these graphics like you see on the page right now, but I, um, you know, we all have phones with cameras, take photos, you have a book, take photos of your book, right? And use that. And you'll be surprised at what that can actually produce for you. So the rest of the things, like we're going to run through the primary text using Sue's book as an example here in a minute. I'll actually do that directly in the ads manager because I've got a simple process for that. But the ad image is the thing that actually um, has the most, the word is uh, fatigue. So the ad image is something you'll need to update and change. We actually test new ad images every single week new images, new videos for our clients. Now, some ad images last a few weeks, but because of the way that Facebook works is your ad will continue to show to people in the newsfeed. It's something called frequency. So when frequency is one, that means everyone has seen your ad once. Frequency will start to go up to two to three to four. And um, when that happens, your ad will start to show creative fatigue, which means the image has been seen too much. And people would, you know, stop converting. They're not going to buy the book anymore based on that image. So we need to refresh. We need to take a new photo. We need to create a new graphic and all of those kind of things. And so just keep that in mind. That's the one thing we've actually run for five months now, this exact same copy that you see the primary text at the top, and it, it still works. It's the image that we have to change often. Um, for the button, this is a preset thing that Facebook gives you. There's order now, there's get offer, there's learn more. You know, it just depends. Like sometimes I like to do order now. If I'm explicitly saying, hey, it's a $1 book, get, a, you know, get it now. So order now is like very like, go get it. And it's direct. Whereas if you want to you know, do learn more, you know, that maybe gives the opportunity for someone to click and read your sales page and, and find out more about the book, see the reviews, et cetera. Um, or get offer if, if it's, you know, hey, get yours just $1. Like that's another prime get offer button example. And then the headline, this is something you know, I, I like to do just like something simple. Uh, but this is also something that people will read, I would say second to your ad image. So your ad image is what they see first, then they'll come down to your headline. And so if you make it curiosity driven and you want people to read your primary text, then they'll go up and expand the primary text and read through that. And so that's kind of the logical process that someone goes through when they see your ad. And so like if you make your headline, which is Again, this, this part down here, if you make your headline a little bit more curiosity driven or a little bit more um, open-ended that they might need more information to read about, then that will allow them to come up here and read this, um, which is really what they, we want them to do so that they see the, the full ad, they click to it, and then they, they have a high chance of buying. So let's run through this live. Um, I'm going to jump into Sue's account and um, we're going to go through this together. So this is ads manager. Now, Sue, so sorry for showing all your numbers here. Oh, uh, don't worry. So you, <laughs> they're like, I can see the thing. Ah. Um, there is one of my ads has got a picture of me holding books, by the way. Yeah, I did see that. And I'll, I'll use that as an example. And guess which is my best converting. The one of you holding a book. Uh-huh. Yeah, I hate to say I told you guys, but... <laughs> <laughs> Sue didn't tell me that beforehand, by the way. Um, no, I didn't. Just, that's my experience from testing. Wow. Okay. So we have this green button, create. This is what we use to create a new campaign. 
Um, okay, so auction is the buying type we want to use. So that's already defaulted. Now, again, we have the leads campaign and the sales campaign. These are the two types of conversion campaigns. I never want to see you use traffic as a campaign type. Never, ever, 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 ever. You will waste money using this as a campaign type. Just heads up. So leads, if you're giving your book away for free. Sales, if you're doing a purchase or your book. Okay, so let's choose sales. And this actually allows you to now start to name your campaign. So for me, I like to, you know, I'll come in and do a tag here, SA. Um, that's my smart author tag. And then I'll say like, you know, let's just say, um, uh, so what's your book title again? Uh, write it now. Write it now, women of God. So I'll just go like W-I-N. W-I-N. Win. <laughs> cool. Hmm. Win uh, book sales or something like that. Right. Something simple. Then as we come down to the ad set, um, I will typically uh, name this after what we will do our demographics on so that we can see what's um, what's going on. So I'll usually do demographics and then I'll also do um, you know, what the creative is as well. So I can see at an ad set level, hey, what is the image or the type of copy that's working for us? And then down here, I'll just do creative. So we'll, we'll come back through and I'll properly name this, but that's just kind of the format that I use. So I'm just going to create this, you know, just ignore this kind of stuff. Let's just go into a manual setup. Okay. So from, from a campaign level, we actually don't need to do anything else here, right? Um, that's pretty much all set up for us already. And then from an, uh, an ad set level, what we want to do is go to websites and then we'll choose our um, conversion event, which for all of us, it should be purchase. We'll set our daily budget and this is going to be different for every single person here. You know, what this is what this one ad is going to spend on a, on a daily perspective. I would say like no less than $10, right? That's probably too small if, you, if you're not spending at least $10. So for most of my clients, I start this off at like 50. Um, I would typically spend $100 a day when we launch our ads so that we can get as much data as fast as possible. Okay, cool. So then we're going to come down into the audience area. So this is where we set our demographics and our targeting. So location is very important. I would recommend that you guys pick one country to start with. If you do more than one country, it's far too thin. You'll probably spend a lot of time and energy on <clears throat> marketing across the world to the main five countries, and it'll be hard to know what's working for you. So pick the country that you live in or the country where your target market is. For most of my clients, it's the United States. Some of them, uh, it's Australia. I've got a couple of property investing books. That's an Australian market. We'll just market in Australia. The age range is not that important, but let's just roughly say like, hey, if, if I had an ideal reader, what age are they? You know, for Sue, it probably would be 30 to 55 or something like that, or even maybe 30 to 60, right? Um, Sue, correct me if I'm wrong, it might be a little bit younger, but... Yeah, no, definitely. I would say people younger than 30 are not, well, there are some, but uh, not as many are thinking about writing a book. Yeah. Okay. So if you wanted to be safe, you could go 25, but let's mm. just say 30 for this example. And it's for women, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I always do women. Cool. There you go. So, you know, we're going to change the gender to women. And then um, I and do then reading. Uh, so as an interest, I do reading because obviously readers, readers buy books. Yep. Do you okay. always do that? I don't know. I, so for me, most of my clients are like business owners. Yeah. So like yeah. I have, um, I've got a business owner stack of detailed targeting that I use and it's typically other business authors. Right. Yeah. That are well-known like Gary V, um, uh, Brendan Burchard, um, you know, Jim Rohn, et cetera. Yeah. So I do like business authors and business leaders and typically people who are interested in those kind of people will buy another business book. Mm, mm, true. I do target Jim Rohn because he's a Christian. Um, 
Okay. Actually, Facebook has actually removed targeting for Christian influencers and Facebook made it very difficult for people who are targeting Christians to actually directly target to them. Um, okay. Which is very interesting. So Jeff Goins is another good one because he helps people write books. How do I spell his last name? Uh, G-O-I-N-S. Cool. Uh, so those are good. Yeah, those are good ones. Zig Ziglar is a good one as well. I, I do Zig Ziglar as well. Yeah, personal development. And he was a Christian. He's a Christian as well. So let's just, let's just leave that here. Ultimately, this estimated audience size, we generally want it to be kind of above uh, a million if possible, right? Um, if, if this audience size is too small, we're going to run out of, I mean, we, we technically won't run out of people to, to run ads to, but it just makes, it makes our, our budget um, a little bit harder to get spent. So this is a, a decent audience size. You just want to aim for a, a fairly broad audience selection. So right in the green area. Um, if you go too specific here and your audience size is too small, then it's going to be hard for Facebook to find a lot of people for you to run your ads to. So let's just pretend that this is a good audience stack for us. Um, now for you, um, just like Sue was you know, thinking through, um, you know, who is someone that might be a good fit for you? based on their, uh, you know, their, their beliefs, the, their following and the people who follow them, you know, what do they believe in? What do their uh, followers do? So like Zig, Zig Ziglar, again, his beliefs, he's Christian, he's into personal development. So people who are interested in Zig Ziglar are likely similar, right? You know, I, I, I'm a fan of Zig Ziglar. I'm not necessarily Christian, but I'm into personal development. And yeah. so like yeah. you can find that there's, you know, a percentage that people aren't exactly the, a good fit, but you'll find that there's a, a good percentage of people who are as well. Yeah. Um, and now for Sue, I would actually say like targeting countries like United States, where it's like primarily a Christian country as well. Like that mm -hmm. would get a lot more bang for buck um, than someone like Australia, where there's a smaller Christian population. Is there? Over. I didn't know that. So um, just just think about you know those kind of things. If you think about the the targeting that you're doing, um, and you know potentially what are the traits of the people that follow them, um, and you know are they your ideal audience? Is there going to be you know, obviously there's going to be a percentage that aren't in there, but is there a good enough overlap of people who are right? Yeah. So pretty much everything else, let's not worry about any other configuration. Literally, this audience area is kind of the only configuration besides budget and what our conversion type is going to be, okay? And then creative. So this is the, oh, sorry, let me go back here. So um, now that we've got our dem demographics figured out, what we can do is come into here and go um, age, so 30 to 60. And then we can put in... Um, we can put in the country. So like UK is an example. And then we can put in the demographics. So let's just say this is uh, Christian and then just go like pro professional development, right? Something like that. We'll come back and we'll edit the creative later. But this gives us a good idea, like at a quick glance, like, oh, cool, 30 to and we'll probably actually put in um, women as well, or even just W. So at a glance, 30 to 60 age, they're in the UK, they're women, and they're Christian and into professional development, right? So that gives us a really good idea right away of what we're doing on a targeting level. Now, this obviously is only super applicable if you run different targeting, but I would suggest that you test different audiences as well. And just see what you find works. Like, again, I don't know what's going to work for you. I don't know what's going to work for my clients, but we test, we figure it out. This is, this should give you a good enough starting point to, to begin with. 
All right, so that's a different account. Let me just see if I can, cool. All right, so now we go to the creative, right? This is the, the area where I stayed on Scott's example for a little while. And this is actually not a complicated area either, but we do need to write some primary text for the book, okay? Um, first, let's go and add some media. So we'll click on add image. Now, I created a book uh, for Sue, a book graphic. This is obviously, it says free book, but um, you know, this is something, again, like Scott's example that would work quite well. Um, if it wasn't free book, you know, new book, get your copy now for just X amount or something like that would be applicable. Um, or as Sue said before, I think this book here, or this ad here was the one that worked for her, right? Yep. So we'll just crop this in. For the right column, don't worry too much about sizing. And even for the this middle one, stories, reels, and apps, like you could probably just leave it you know, kind of square or even, yeah, it doesn't really matter too much. So I actually like to just do all optimizations and click done just to make it easy. So that's a fantastic photo. Let's go into creating some copy and ads around this. So, um, you know, for Sue, learn more might be the button for her. I would just say like test, learn more, test order now, um, test, uh, get offer. I would say just test all of those kind of three. The headline, we'll start there and just go something like, cool. So we've got write it now, women of faith, right? Yeah. And is there a big promise of the book? Like, is it like, is there write it's it in your book? Yeah. Is it like write it faster? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, the subtitle is how to write your faith based book fast. Cool. Okay. Okay. I'm not sure why this isn't. Popular. How much space does it show? Yeah. Does it show how many characters does it show? I didn't It'll realize show... you could make the headline that long. Yeah. You can, you can write it as long as you want. It will, it will depend on the, the feed. So I'm not sure why this isn't populating. Let me just, I'll just put in a website here. Um, oh, you can put write it now book.com. I've, I've got that domain now. All right. Okay. Yeah. I think it was just because I didn't have a website in there. Yeah. Okay. So, so something like that, where it's like, you know, it will, it will cut off. We could also go um, even just like this and that would show all of it. Or we could also call like, and then if we said women of faith at the start there, we could also go like how to write your book fast, you know, cause it's like, it's already calling that and then that all shows, right? So like, once you just play with this again, this is something to test, right? Um, if you have a specific offer as well, like let's say, say you're doing a dollar book or something, you know, you can just like Scott's example, you can just jump straight into saying, you know, best selling book, get it now for a dollar, you know, over 60,000, you know, Scott's one is over 60,000 copies sold. Like that's obviously a really good tout. Um, you know, we, we all may not have that. <laughs> it's accolade to, to sh share in an ad, but you know, just get a little bit creative with the headline. Again, people are going to go here first, image, then here, and then up to the primary text. Okay. So primary text is actually pretty simple. Um, or I'm going to try and simplify it for you. So I like to start with a problem. So Sue, what do you think for women of faith who have a book in them, what do you think their biggest problem is right now? I know the main ones is 
Uh, so we have a few here. I think, don't know from... how. Can't find the time. Yeah. Yeah. Don't know how. Oh yes, you can see you can see them there. Those are the ones I hear all the time. And then there's also there's fear and self doubt. Uh, you know, will anyone ever read it? Um, am I good enough? Uh, am I qualified to write a book? Uh, how do I do it? Where do I start? Okay. Cool. Okay. Perfect. All right. So um, the the way that I like to start this is um, we could, you know, obviously our headline is calling out who the audience is. So if you have that in there, then we don't necessarily need to like directly relate that again. Um, if you don't, we would definitely. The way that we would start this is like, are you struggling with? Are you struggling to, let's just say, find the time and motivation to write your let's just say faith based book right so we always like i i generally would would start with a pain like that because it's a hook it's a way for us to like quickly identify like hey if this person isn't struggling with this then it's probably not the book for them you know like even here it's going to qualify disqualify people and then we can actually just go straight into it. it's like my new book and then we can put in The title. Oh, what's your sub? What's your thing again? Sorry, Sue. Uh, write it now, woman of God. And then colon, how to write your faith based book fast. And then we can just like give it a little bit more explanation. Gives you the step by step i was gonna say step by step. process to to easily writing your book in the next let's just say put a time frame on it like 30 days or something like that might not be accurate but you know then we can go into like thinking about what some of the uh, benefits like why should someone read your book okay um, it, is inside, this where you want my five reasons? Yeah, yeah. Give me a second. Inside, uh, inside this book, you'll. I like to do like things like discover or like you'll learn. So yeah. you'll discover how, and then we can go into the five reasons. Okay. So number one, how to overcome fear and self doubt over writing your book and be confident as a writer. how to take your book ideas out of overwhelm and break down the process in doable steps. How to be motivated like never before from the queen of action. <laughs> I found out how to build excitement around your book before it's even written. And I've got another one, actually, um, how to create your book outline for multiple genres. Okay. And be in inspired by stories of people just like you who okay. didn't think they could do it and have done it. All right. We'll just leave it here for now. All right. So I'm just going to remove these how-tos. Give me a second. All right, so there's a there's a tool here that I'll actually use that is like game changer. Um, it's called convertcase.net. And it's really mm. just a way for us to easily change the formatting of this. So I'm just going to paste this in and go uh, sentence case. I'll just grab oh, cool. That okay, cool. So now I like to just like, and this is different for everyone, right? But I like to like make this a little bit more colorful because it's, um, you know, the, the alternative is just like doing these little dashes because that's like the bullets of Facebook ads. Um, but you can't really do anything other than that for formatting. So what I actually like to do is add in emojis. So it just makes the ad a little bit more lively and colorful. And I'm not really sure how you guys feel about emojis, but I, I kind of just like them um, overall. Um, so you could, great. you could yeah. do a simple, like, 
pointing emoji like this and that kind of alludes to like bullets or you could actually like customize each one for the thing that's being mentioned so like overcome fear and self-doubt so let's just go fear let's see what comes um like we might use that one confident so let's see what comes up there Con cool. okay so this is another like overwhelm um let's just search something here right so something like that so let's just do something like a pan here for this one maybe this one or that one um motivated cool and then we could probably do something like either like love eyes or like heart uh, um, star eyes something like that let's go with that one right so and then i actually will come in and just like oops this is being a lot slow this kind of just like helps break it up a little bit more so like as we look at the ad it kind of just like gives a bit of white space for reading opportunity Um, and then really just need to do kind of like a, a, a sign off kind of thing here. So, you know, we've spoken about like, Hey, what are the struggles? And, you know, you could lead with multiple other opening struggles here. So for Sue's here, like are you struggling to find time motivation? Like that's just one aspect of, you know, people have overwhelmed self-doubt They you know, they have, um, a lack of ideas they're not sure if they're an expert they're, they're qualified to write a book you know there's a heap of things that you could test here and replace with this first opening text and so that's an opportunity for you to um, create variations of your ads and test because again this is something that people will see um, even before they expand the text at the top as well so we've done that we've referenced hey like i've got a book that can help you in the next 30 days um, inside the book you'll learn this and we could actually do like a, a much, much more as well in here. Like that just like um, alludes to obviously there being more to what we're saying. Like this is only a snippet, right? So I like to then call out the avatar and go like, if you're, um, if you're finding it hard to... Right, so this is just like you know, very simplistic, right? Like I'm not overcomplicating things here. Um, Sue obviously probably has a lot more like story-based stuff that she could try um, and write in here. But you know, me knowing very little about Sue's book, um, this is kind of what I would create, you know, as a starting point to test. Um, I would suggest that like, a lot more story could go in between here and here. So Sue could tell a little bit of her personal story. Like when I first started writing my book, like, you know, I was completely stuck. I spent the first three years trying to figure it out. You know, I hired ex mentor and, you know, spent thousands of dollars and got nowhere. You know, she, she would tell a real story about the pain points and, and trials that she went through to get her first book out um, and then relate to how now she's created an easier solution for the person who's reading the ad. It's like, you don't have to go through any of that. In fact, I want to send you my book for, you know, whatever, $10, $9.95, and you will get the exact same outcomes, but in much less time, right? So like, you can just relate like your personal story, the reason why you wrote your book, you can actually tell a bit more of a story at, um, as to why you did that. And then how the reader can actually get the benefit of your book and the outcome that it provides um, without all of the trials and tribulations that Sue had to go through. And so just think about like what you can potentially write as a story that goes in there. And this actually might be something from your book's summary, right? The thing that we um, looked at before, you might already have some level of story in there um, that relates. So just think about how you can include that into your ad in the opening. We really want to like first hook them like, hey, are you struggling with X, Y, Z? 
that's going to help the person identify with your ad initially. Then we can tell a bit of a story. Then we can show them the solution. Hey, my new book can help. Then we can show them what's inside. And then we can sign off and go like, hey, you don't have to worry about this. You can click the learn more button to go get a copy now. And that's kind of how, you know, I would suggest we write ads um, to, be, to begin with. So if I expand this um, and just have a look at the ad properly, this is what a mobile viewer will see when they expect, you know, when they click learn more, you know, it's a nice little neat direct response ad this, you know, someone who sees this, it's, you know, we're going, we're telling a little bit about the book and we're giving a direct offer. Um, the way to expand on this is just telling a bit more story and going a little bit more into the depths and the weeds of why you wrote the book and really trying to relate to the person who's reading the ad. Uh, obviously, I don't have the experience on Sue's book to write that right now, um, but I wanted to give you guys an example of like what you could get up today if you really put your mind to it. And then um, we've also got the desktop. Um, so desktop will show a little bit more of the primary text. See more will obviously expand that. So that's ultimately um, just make sure you have, you know, the website URL is in there properly. Like right now, book.com is probably not the proper one to use here. So just make sure you have your funnel URL in there properly. Um, and then we also need to make sure that we install our pixels and things like that. Um, the, there's training on that kind of stuff uh, from Meta, which we can, you know, I'll, I'll reference it a little bit later here. So um, creative, uh, let's just change this to um, something like, um, I would just say uh, DR copy, direct response copy. And then I'll say um, Sue holding books, right? And then up here, we can then include that in the um, ad set level. I would say that Sue holding books is the one that's going to change often. Just again, based on the images are the ones that you need to test more. So we would just change that to Sue holding books. Now, the way to build more tests is we would basically come in here and we would duplicate the ad set. So from now, like this would change from Sue holding books to uh, book graphic. And then under here, we would change DR copy to book graphic. Then we'd you know, come in here and we would edit the image to be Sue's book. Again, I've got the wrong text on here, but you know, it, the, the same thing is applicable, right? So now we've got like two different ads that we can test. One's a graphic, one's a picture of Sue holding the book. And by the way, you can just have all pictures of you know, people holding a book or you holding a book or you with people. Like you can do a lot of lifestyle stuff. But this stuff works good as well, just as a heads up. And um, yeah, I mean, like that's as simple as it is. Like you would basically hit publish on these. Um, they would go live and start running the ads um, as soon as they're approved by Facebook. So if you don't want them to go live right away, you can just turn this off, wait for it's approved. Once it's approved, you can turn this on and it will run as soon as you turn it on. So if you want to wait, just prepare things with the campaign off and click publish. Like I, I'll do that now for Sue so that she can see this in her account um, because it's only for me whilst I'm creating the ads until I hit publish, no one can see it. So now Sue will be able to see this ads. If she wanted to run this ad, she could once it's approved by Facebook and she can just turn that on for whenever she wants kind of thing. And that's basically it. So let's go back to my presentation because I have some more things I need to run through that relate to um, what happens when things don't necessarily work for us. How to problem solve ads? Because the first thing that we need to do is just have the assumption that ads are going to stop working. Ads don't always work. And in fact, I've had ads where it costs hundreds of dollars for someone to buy one book that's free plus shipping. That's a $9 book. And it costs us $200 to get someone to buy that book. Okay, so things will stop working. So don't, don't just like get surprised when they stop working for you. Assume it'll happen. Okay, that's the first lesson of running ads on Facebook because um, it will. And I'm sure Sue's wasted a bit of money 
um, on things that don't work as well. I like this analogy of a leaky hose. Just pretend we've got a hose that has a bunch of holes in it and the starting point is our ads and the finish point is our funnel. It is our job to start at one end of the hose, the ad side, and find to see if there's any leaks in the hose as we go along to the funnel side. And so there's essentially a process of what we need to check first and last to figure out what's working or not working. Okay, so that's the first thing we need to think about. So here are some metrics that you need to know. We have CPM. This is the cost per 1,000 impressions. We have CPC, the cost per link click. There's two types of CPCs, by the way. There's CPC all, which is anyone who's clicked on anything on your ad. And then there's the link click cost. We want to identify the link click cost. Um, and then there's the cost per result, which is essentially your leads or your website purchases. Let's just say that this is called CPR. Okay, so this is very, like this is a simplistic generalization of a number that you can quickly identify to know if things are working for you or not. So if your CPM is above $50, then your targeting is probably off. Your message, your thing is not resonating with the people that you're running ads to right now. So you should probably go back to the drawing board on what you're, who you're targeting. If your cost per click is above $7, then you don't have the right ad copy or imagery to entice people to click on your ad and go to your landing page. Just remember that if we're selling our book, like we kind of want this number to be definitely below $7, but like even below $5, because at the end of the day, that's only the link click. That's not people actually purchasing your book. So you know, if this number is too high, then the number for them to actually buy your book is going to be astronomical in comparison. You could probably expect it to be five to 10 times higher than what this number is. Again, just remember that only five to 15% of people who click will buy. So you can engineer, back engineer what the $7 at, you know, let's just say we had a hundred clicks at $7. That's $700 and we only have a 5% conversion rate. That's five book buyers at $700. You know, you can quickly see that that's going to be over $100 for someone to buy your book at that conversion rate number. So the lower we can get this number, the better opportunity we have for more people to buy our book at a lower cost. And then the, the CPR, the cost per result is too expensive. Typically your funnel is uh, needs to be fixed. Okay, so let's just go back into the, the CPM at the start. So to fix your targeting, this is where you would run different detailed targeting. So test new audiences, test new interests of people, test different countries potentially, test different age ranges. This is really where you test your interests and your demographics of the people who you're running ads to. That's how you fix this problem. The ad creative, if someone isn't clicking on your ad, then the image is probably the first thing that you want to test. So update your image, use a different graphic, use a different picture, maybe a picture in better lighting, maybe a picture with better, like a more interesting background, you know, in the, in the background of you holding your book, maybe a picture that looks more like it would be something you post to social media. So it looks more organic. You know, it, it, again, I don't have the answers for you here. I just like... I can give you some examples and it's going to be different for every single person who, you know, maybe if you're, if you have a, a, a faith-based book, like Sue t helps teaching, maybe something in a church, something that, that, that might resonate with your audience, right? The next thing is the headline, of course. So, you know, test different headlines. Um, I gave you one example of Sue's. You can also, I, you know, you saw Scott's one as well. That was very direct to the point. Um, and then the last one is obviously the primary text. So adding in a little bit more story, a little bit more emotion to connect someone um, who has the same problem as your audience and elaborating on that more. The more you could explain someone's problem to them, the more likely they're going to see you as a solution to that problem and your book in extension to that. Okay, so the funnel, there is um, a couple of areas where we can quickly identify changes on the funnel. The first is the headline the headline is like the the opening book um, of your page. I gave you a very, very simplistic one before, but you know, I would say like having a benefit and a a problem headline is probably something that I would recommend the most. And that is something like faith-based women, are you struggling to write your book? My new book reveals a, a way to get a book out of you in the next 30 days. Like um, without the overwhelm, without the stress, without 
XYZ problem. So you can kind of just like think about different ways that you can phrase your book's problem and solution in a way um, that resonates with your audience. The next thing in the funnel to test is your offer. So if people aren't buying your book, maybe your offer isn't attractive enough to them. So this goes back to what your front end book format is, digital, physical, or audio, maybe test a different version of those formats initially. And then what are your bonuses? If your bonuses don't resonate, if people don't see the value in those, then, you know, they're not going to buy. So like your, your like front end book offer should be so attractive that it gets a, a good amount of volume of people going through. And so just change out some of the bonuses and test different things there as well. It's pretty easy to change that stuff from a deliverability standpoint when someone does buy, if it's digital, of course. Um, so just test different things there. And then lastly, the thing to test is um, with offer, obviously comes different offer inclusions, but offer price points as well. So test different pricing, make it simple. Um, and the last thing is the messaging on the page. So if you're not like, very specifically, again, talking to someone's pains and explaining it in a way that they can understand it and see you as a solution, then, you know, they, they may not buy. So just, you know, explore how you can, you can include more of that messaging in your sales page, but hopefully you guys with the frameworks that I've given you, you shouldn't need to go to that depth. I think you'll be pretty good with the, the structure that I provided for you, the, the five reasons why to get the book, the 10 best things, et cetera. Like that's something that we've um, seem work for our clients without needing to go super in depth with crazy copywriting and stuff like that. Okay. So um, coming back to a cost per results, too expensive. What is too expensive for a result? People, you know, will typically ask like, Hey, how much should I spend on a, a book buyer? And it really depends. Like does your book buyer then go on to buy programs and services from you? Then, you know, some people like my real estate, um, book client, you know, they are happy to spend $50 or more on getting a book buyer because they know the value that that book buyer will provide for their business. And so this is really up to you. You know, I can't tell you what's a good price for someone to buy your book. Um, and it also depends on your funnel. Like does your book funnel have an average order value, which means the amounts on average that people spend in your, your book funnel? Does it have a, a average order value that is $50? So therefore you spending $50 to buy, get a book buyer breaks even on your ad spend. Then if that's the case, then, you know, that's a comfortable number for you to um, set aside for people to buy your book. Um, you know, sometimes you're happy to spend a little bit above that. So maybe $70 for someone to spend $50 in your funnel, or maybe $30 for someone to spend $10 in your funnel. You know, it, it's, it's up to you, really. It's what you're comfortable with. It's what you feel okay with setting aside. Now, I would actually recommend that most of you um, set aside a specific amount of money to run Facebook ads with to your book funnel without the expectation of any return on investment directly in the funnel. The really awesome thing about books, and I'm sure Sue can attest to this as well, is that it creates tremendous report and um, authority and credibility in the space that you're in. It's not all about making money from your book. You'll find that if people get your book and read your book and love your book, then that might not return anything on that relationship for several months, even a year or even more. But the level of authority and credibility that you've just built with that person is amazing. And they'll tell people about you if they enjoyed your book. And you'll find that it will naturally progress if you market your book in an effective way. And it kind of compounds in that sense. And so, you know, today it might be, it might feel like it's expensive for you to run ads and there's no direct return on investment with the ads that you're running. But I promise you that it will return itself tenfold just based on the efforts that you do today. Like that's the really cool thing about books. And that's why I love marketing books for my clients. Cool. So once we go through the process, you know, we'll have fixed the CPM, we'll have fixed the CP, CPC, the CPR, the offer, the headline, et cetera. So, you know, we should have band-aids on all of our hose leaks. And if it stops working again, go back and check if the band-aid's leaking. Go back and see if the leak's happening. You just need to go again from start to finish. Like every single time a client's campaign stops working for me, I just go from start to finish and figure out how to fix it. It's um, again, it's going to go wrong. You just need to know what, what to do to problem solve this. Okay. So we're almost done here. Some technical housekeeping, right? Make sure you install your Metapixel. 
And you also need to ins install a conversion event on the page after they opt in. So give their name and email or they purchase. So the page after that, you should have a Facebook pixel event that says to Facebook, hey, this person's either a lead or they are a purchase. Um, now that's, I can't really go into that technical side. Like literally Facebook has documentation on all of that kind of stuff. So have a look at this and then search it when you're ready to implement in your funnel, okay? Like obviously you guys don't even have funnels yet. So come back to this. Also make note of something called Microsoft Clarity. Okay, so just remember Microsoft Clarity. This is actually a free tool that I use for all of my clients to get heat mapping and visitor recordings on my sales pages. So this will actually record someone going through your funnel on mobile, on desktop, and it will show you what they're doing, which is you know, there's other softwares like Hotjar and things like that that charge thousands of dollars a year for this. And Microsoft Clarity is free. So you utilize this, it will actually tell you the entry page and the exit page as well. So if they go through your whole funnel, you can quickly see you know, who the conversions are. Heat mapping is also very handy because it can show you where people are clicking on your page. It's really good for um, problem solving if you've got a technical issue with your buttons and stuff like that. If someone's clicking a lot and not, not converting, you know, maybe your button's broken. Um, so it's just very, very handy to, to have and use. Um, it'll also give you some more data around devices people use, um, locations they visit from. So if you're running ads to United States and you've got a lot of traffic from a different country, a lot of people visiting from a different country, you know, potentially something's wrong there, right? So just it'll allow you to check that kind of stuff. Test weekly, as I've explained, you know, ads fatigue and um, you should always have backups ready to go. So in Sue's case, we've just created two ads. I would actually launch with two ads right away, personally, to split test. But after that, we would probably create about 10 more for my clients and just have those approved, ready to turn on. Because again, when things fatigue and they will, you need to be able to turn stuff on. Otherwise you're stuck without anything. Now the process we use for my clients is we'll launch something new every Monday and um, and we'll try to find new things that win. So every single week we we launch something new, we'll find new things that win. And then when the things that win stop winning, we have new winners that we can easily turn on or have to replace it. And uh, lastly, don't forget to follow up with your readers, right? Don't forget to follow up with the people who buy your book. I think it's easy to forget to email people or even set up the email automations. So when someone buys, you know, they get access to what they bought. Don't forget that stuff, right? Don't forget to email them consistently as well. And I'm sure Sue's ta taught you all about this, but it's definitely, it's very important that you build a relationship with these people. And, um, and there's something called a customer journey that you, you take them through a customer journey. You deliver on your promises of what you said the book can do for them and then you further help them if you do that you're going to create awesome customers for your business if you have one um, and that's that's really the most important thing here so if any of you guys want help setting up and managing your facebook ads and funnel um, i'm a little bit expensive and i also am very picky with who i work with but if you do, you can visit this URL at the bottom of the page that's been on the slides the whole presentation. <laughs> I'm a little bit expensive and picky. <laughs> yeah, I'm very picky. All right, Dan, that was an awesome video. Hopefully, like I said, you got a lot out of that. Um, if you are wanting some help setting up marketing for your book and potentially want someone to do it for you, there's really one place for us to best connect and see if we're a good fit to work together. You can go to smartauthormedia.com forward slash chat, C-H-A-T. And basically we can go through everything that you are doing with your book marketing at the moment or haven't been doing. And we can see what our team, our company can do to help you. So that's smartauthormedia.com forward slash chat. And we can just basically chat to see if we're a good fit to work together. And if not, you'll at least walk away from the call with some good advice on what you could implement yourself. Look forward to seeing you over there.